the help of divine providence, and thanks to my present financial well-being, I have been able to rescue my beloved birthplace from the hands of creditors. And once again, I am here in my boyhood home. Being here brings back so many memories. I remember with fondness my mother and father and my nine brothers and sisters who live with me and farm the land. Samuel was born in Scotland on July 5th of 1731. Samuel lived when Connecticut was still a colony. Like many of the founders of the country, Samuel was a five-generation American. They were no longer Englishmen. Many people in Connecticut and the other colonies were really upset with England. These times were a turmoil for the colonists, or as they now call themselves, Americans, revolutionaries. Samuel moved down to Norwich, where there was fertile ground for a good attorney which he was. He restarted his political career. He was appointed to the General Assembly into the upper house. He had been appointed the King's Attorney, one of the King's Attorneys for Connecticut. But because of his leaning to help support his friends and family and the other colonies in the Revolution, he resigned this position and he devoted himself to the American cause from there on. And the Declaration of Independence was coming. On May 10th, 1776, Samuel and the other members of the Second Continental Congress voted that the Declaration of Independence be signed and sent to King George III of England. As Samuel was president of the Second Continental Congress at this time, serving his second term. My sincere belief in the great author of nature rests on the foundation that was set for me in those early days. I think back on those youthful times with great blessings. I have spent my life in public service. I served in the Continental Congress, signed the Declaration of Independence, and am now Governor of Connecticut. I have the satisfaction of knowing that our glorious cause has been successful and that our new republic seems to finally be on a proper footing with our new constitution. So it is with a mixture of humble pride and happiness that I sit in my birthplace where my long journey began and reflect back on this homestead, which I now, with great regard, refer to as Huntingdon. He died in office, and when he died, he had already donated some of his backyard to Norwich Town as part of the old burying grounds, the cemetery where most of the founders of Norwich and their families were buried. Samuel was buried there with great fanfare. The entire state mourned him. Over the years, this mausoleum has been neglected and forgotten. Basically, the same way Samuel and his life and accomplishments were forgotten. With the help of many friends and groups, efforts were made, money was raised, expert people were hired to reconstruct the tomb. The tomb was completely rebuilt, and it's beautiful now. When most people think of help for an organization like ours, they think of money. The Samuel Huntington Trust has a mission to uh, preserve Samuel's birthplace in Scotland educate the public of Samuel's accomplishments and life, and to operate the Huntington Homestead Museum. The trust needs dedicated members, workers, who are willing to take office, to chair a committee, to uh, supervise an event or a project that we have, become a docent at the uh, museum, to do research on Samuel. When we have these kind of people to help us, the support we get, we can use. I am Ch 
Channing Moore Huntington II, and like all Huntingtons, I know and admire Samuel Huntington and his story. I am one of the founders of the Governor Samuel Huntington Trust. We started in 1994, and in 1996, we purchased Samuel's birthplace, the Huntington Homestead, in Scotland, Connecticut, with the intentions of restoring it and operating it as a museum. The trust mission is to educate the public of Samuel's life and accomplishments through his letters, his histories, and public events. You may contact us through our website. I thank you. Samuel Huntington, the future governor of uh, Connecticut, was born on July 16, 1731, in the town of Wyndham, more specifically in the parish called Scotland. It's nice to reflect back upon those early times with my mother and the inspiration she gave me, which I believe helped me develop into the man I became. Recalling studying the scripture with her brings back warm memories. I also remember those long hours toiling on the farm. My brothers and sisters and I worked doing the various tasks required for day-to-day -day operation. Although my father called me his dutiful son, I did not want to take over the farm. I much preferred Book and Quill, where I learned that my strong mind might suit me well in future endeavors, rather than the strong back such work on the farm would require. Samuel may have felt a little restive that he didn't also have the opportunity to go to Yale, and there's indication that he was interested in education, interested in reading, and so forth. He was primarily uh, self-educated, which means he sat and read books and absorbed them the best he could. Uh, the minister, Reverend Devotion, probably opened his library, and uh, probably at least uh, a one or two lawyers who lived in Wyndham Center opened their libraries as well. As an older lad, I began to think about my own future. The farm life was not enough for me. Instead, I found myself drawn to the home of our beloved minister and neighbor, Ebenezer Devotion. As an older lad, I began to think about my own future. The farm life was not enough for me. Instead, I found myself drawn to the home of our beloved minister and neighbor, Ebenezer Devotion. Reverend Devotion invited me to read and learn from his own books, the classics. I spent many inspiring hours reading in his home, where I was occasionally served tea by his lovely young daughter, Martha who would one day become my wife. As I read through Reverend Devotion's library, I resolved to learn all I could on my own from books and learn the men I would meet in life. Attorney Elizabeth Dyer offered me the opportunity to read his law books, and I accepted. Undoubtedly, he just read in the libraries of local men who would open their libraries to him. Uh, the minister, Reverend Devotion, probably opened his library, and uh, probably at least uh, a one or two lawyers who lived in Wyndham Center. Samuel Huntington had a, a long and distinguished career. He was admitted to the bar in uh, 1754. Uh, he rose to the ranks of becoming a, a, a local judge, being elected to the colonial and to the state assembly. He became uh, assistant governor, and he was elected governor of the state of Connecticut. The yeah, goals of the Huntington Homestead Museum and the Governor Samuel Huntington Trust are in three areas. Um, one, to tell the, the story of the life and the important part that Samuel Huntington played in developing this country. He's kind of a forgotten father. The second thing is to show the house, which is an interesting architectural piece, and the evolution of the house. 
Right now, the um, museum is in a, in a primitive state. Uh, the house needed a lot of work, a lot of repair, and we're, we are putting a heating system in the house, and the next step is to restore the interior and, and then develop the exhibits. And the third area is to, to draw together the, the importance of, of uh, Eastern Connecticut and the, the role it played in, in the development of this country and in the revolution in particular, of which Samuel was a part. Where's the next step?